Hello everyone, welcome to Papa's Workshop. In today's video, I want to answer some of the questions that you guys have had. And one of the questions that I get most often about the X-Tools D1 laser is how to be able to center the engraving in your workspace. So today I want to be able to discuss that on how to make sure that you are exactly in the center of your workspace. And I'm going to be using the Lightburn software to be able to do that. When you first turn on the machine, you're going to get this little grid line. And we're going to be able to use that to make sure that our project is actually aligned and square to the machine. And we can pull this forward. And we can see, just by looking at that, that is very square. I need to pull it just a little bit more that way. And that's perfect. So we know now, by using this grid, that this slate is exactly square to the machine itself. Go ahead and open the Lightburn software and show you how I set it up. Now the first thing I'm going to do is come down here under the optimization settings. And right now I have Gerbil and XCarve. And I'm going to click the down arrow and I'm going to select the XTool D1. And that is going to have everything set up that I need to be able to have to be able to make this work. One of the things that I really like to do when I first turn on the machine is make sure that it moves correctly. Just because I use a lot of different lasers and it's a good idea to make sure that everything is moving correctly. So I'm going to come up here to this move section and I'm going to go to the left on the x-axis and you can see in the camera where it's moving in that direction and the same thing back to the right then i'm going to go on the y-axis and make sure that it's moving in that direction and then coming forward so that's the first thing that i always like to be able to do once that's done let's go ahead and down to the art library and i'm going to select a file and i'm just going to go to the logos and i'm going to just drag this one over Now for the sake of this one, I'm going to go ahead and work in the inches for this one. And I want to be able to have this set up now. This is actually two inches by two inches. And I'd like to be able to make this about three inches. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this, change this on the width to three inches. And now you'll see it changed the bottom also because this was locked. Now once you have your logo set up, the next step really is to frame it. And I can hold down the shift key and click the frame and it will show exactly where this is going to be uh, engraving. Now to be able to use the frame button, I'm going to hold down the shift key again and I'm going to hit frame. And then you can see the blue light exactly where it's going to be going. There's another way you can do it also. Now this is a tip that I picked up from the Louisiana Hobby Guy, and it actually makes sense. I went ahead and put a square in here, and I'm going to put this at, um, go ahead and highlight this square, and I'm going to put this at four inches. Now I have it at three and a half by three and a half, I'm going to go ahead and lock this, and I'm going to set it for four inches. And that's going to be the size of the tile itself. And then from there, I'm going to come over here, and we're going to click on this, and I'm going to put this at 2% power, really low. That's actually the setting that I use between 2 and 2.5% two and to be able to do the fire button. And I'm going to do this in three passes. And at three passes, I should be able to have it lined up. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, once this is done, I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to turn the output off for the blue fill. I'll still let it be shown, but I want this to be shown as the output, and I want to be able to see the line. And then now I'm going to go ahead and run this job. It's going to run three times, and that should give me enough time 
to be able to set up the uh, project exactly in the center. So I went ahead and hit start and you can see now I can slide this tile around and move it wherever it needs to be to be able to get it where it's going to be centered. So this is f literally framing the tile. You can see the line right there. The tile is four inches by four inches and my square was four inches by four inches. And that's running right along the edge. You can see that on the first pass, I was able to get it aligned. On the second pass, I was able to make any small corrections. And the third pass just verifies everything. I think that looks real good now. Now, as far as the laser is concerned, it just completed a project. And you can see now by watching this, it gives you plenty of time with the three passes. And now it's set and it's ready to go. Now I want to be able to show you something else. Now you see where this X is right there? That crosshair is the actual center of this project. If I drew diagonal lines from corner to corner, this would be right in the center. And that's the other way that you can align your project. That's going to be your center point on how I have the machine set up on the current position. So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and set the Z axis to the proper height. Now you have this little lever right here that will just drop down. When you lower this laser down so that touches your project, that's exactly where it needs to be. You have this knob right here that we can loosen and lower it down until that just touches. Then we tighten that back up and you can see that is touching the surface of the slate. So now we'll put that back up here and that has a little magnetic catch so it just drops right in place very easily. At this point we know that the laser Z height is correct. We also know that it's positioned exactly where it needs to be. So I can actually turn this back on by just selecting the output. I can show it. Now I don't need to show this again, so I can go ahead and turn that off. And now I'm actually ready to be able to engrave this. And one of the things that I could do also, if I decided at the last minute I wanted to be able to make this larger, I could come up here and because this is locked, I could select this at 3.5 and that's now larger. If you want to be able to confirm that that still will fit in that space, because I haven't changed anything, one, I can just come through and highlight everything and center it right there. And you notice nothing moved. Because the only thing I did is made the logo larger. Now, if you want to test it just to make sure, you can turn this back on, turn the output off, okay, and then at this point, run the project again. Now, this step really is not necessary, but it does give you the reassurance. Now, you can see how this blue line is moving right along the edge. It's exactly what we want, and that verifies our settings. Not necessary, but it does give you the reassurance. So now with this done, let's go ahead and run this project. Remember the old rule, measure twice, cut once. Well, there's no difference with the laser. So there's no other adjustment that need to be done. So that's gonna be right in the center. Hopefully you can see that you can even make last minute changes and then double check it. So let's go ahead and turn the output back on for our fill to do the actual logo. We'll turn off this portion of it and now we'll be able to grab the glasses and we're going to go ahead and engrave this. Now at this point you can see it's dead center. It's looking really, really good. The X-Tool D1 Laser 
does an extremely fine job of being able to do the engraving on slate and so many other materials. So the first part of the logo is finished where it says develop new skills. And I'll zoom in real close and you can see just how good that looks. Now I made this logo larger than what I normally would because I wanted to be able to take it out to these edges. And you can see on how this is engraving that is perfectly aligned with doing the method that I used to show you. Another method literally would just to be able to take a waste board and engrave the image right on the waste board itself and create an image. And that way, each time you did the project, it would drop back into that same point. So there's multiple ways to be able to have this alignment perfect. Some people have asked too, that if you make a mistake in here on the engraving, can you just erase it and be able to do this again? And no, this is a permanent etching on this slate and you're not going to be able to erase it. You can wash this, you can pretty much do anything that you want with this slate, and this image is going to stay right as it is. Now for the next demonstration that I want to do, I went ahead and marked the center point, and we're going to set this up, and we're going to use the center point with that uh, crosshairs to be able to align this to be able to get it directly in the center. And then I'm going to show you another way to be able to make sure that your project is square to the machine itself. And once it's finished, you can see how it moves directly back to the center. And that crosshair marks the exact center. So let's go ahead and pull this one out now. And we can take a look at it up close. And that just looks absolutely amazing. And I, again, I did this larger than normal because I wanted you to see how bringing this right up to the edge still works very, very well. So this method of being able to center it is absolutely fantastic. So I've shown you several ways to be able to center it. One, using the crosshairs directly into the center. Another way would be able to set up the tool path to be able to mark the outline. And then another method would be make a template using a waste board and have it permanently attached to the machine. And that way, every time you set up and ran a job, you could use that template on the waste board itself. Now on this one, I've marked the center right here. This should be real close. This tip, it was chipped off, so I don't know if that's absolutely 100% accurate, but we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna put this one right down here. And one of the ways that I can make sure that is square. We'll get this out of the way for just a moment. And I'm going to put this square right up next to the material and slide the gantry up until it touches. Then I'll come over and do the same thing on the other side. And when that touches the gantry, you know that's square. And then from there, we'll slide this up and we'll move this back over. And now we have the crosshairs directly on the center point. So now we know that this is square to the gantry itself, and we know that the crosshairs is in the direct center. Well, let's go ahead and set up another project now and we'll engrave that. My son sent this graphic to me, and I wanna be able to download this and prepare it for um, engraving. Now this logo is gonna be for his wife, my daughter-in-law, and i um, been wanting to do this one for a while, so today is a good day to be able to do it. I opened up Inkscape, and I'm going to go ahead and bring that file into Inkscape. And before you say it, yes, this could have been done in Lightburn, but I want to show you a variety of different ways to be able to do the same thing. Now from this point, I just want to go ahead and come up to Path, and I'm going to do a Trace Bitmap. We're going to do this in two colors. And we're going to update this. That should be okay. We'll slide that over. That all looks good. Whoops. And I'll cut this, the original. So I'm going to click on this and bring it in. 
and there it is. We're going to need to make some changes. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and keep this locked. We're going to go ahead and highlight everything. And I want to be able to change this down to about three. We'll bring this up where we can see it again. I'm going to put this on the blue layer. That way it's already on a fill. And that's looking really good. So this is going to be now three inches wide, two and a half inches tall. Now at this point, you're actually ready to be able to engrave. But one of the things that I like to be able to do is have the square around it for the size of the tile. Now this is just really my own uh, reference to be able to get a good idea of what it looks like. And when I have the square, I can just highlight everything and hit this little bullseye right there and center it. Now I can actually look and see what the finished product is going to look like on the tile. But there's really no need to be able to frame this again. I've already set it up, so it's really ready to be able to engrave. Now back at the machine, I'm going to go ahead and um, run this project with just that one line. And let's get it, and let's just double check to make sure it's centered. Now I'm doing this just to build your own confidence to show that this does in fact work. Because this is framing the actual tile exactly as it should. So that looks outstanding. So that has been verified now. So we know it's exactly in the center. So you can see that, that method worked extremely well. But let's go ahead now and make the change and go ahead and engrave so this. This shows you just how easy it is to be able to take an image that someone sends to you and have it ready to be able to engrave in just moments. So at this point, I want to turn off this line and I want to turn on the output line for the blue. So that's the only thing that will engrave. And we can go ahead and hit start. Let's grab the glasses and we'll hit start. Now this particular engraving is taking about 30 minutes to be able to engrave. Now there's a multiple of different ways to be able to speed this up, but that's for a different video. I wanted to concentrate on just the positioning of the tile in this video. But you can take a look and see that this X-Tool laser is doing an absolute fantastic job with this engraving. I absolutely think this is a fantastic machine. It's just about finished. It's doing that last little section and now it returns right back to the center. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off now and let's take a look at it. You can see as far as the centered, it is fantastic. I really like the way this came out and the way it looks. These two projects today that I was able to show you were a lot of fun to be able to do. And these show just how easy it is to be able to set the project up and get it directly in the center. And I hope that you found this video useful, and I hope that this actually answers a lot of the questions that you have had about how to be able to use the X-Tools D1 laser and be able to center your project. And if you did like this video, please, by all means, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell notification. I would really appreciate it. It helps this channel to be able to grow and be able to get this video out to more and more people. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video that I'm doing, whatever that may be. So for now, bye-bye. <laughs>